Hey folks, it's Laura with Rain Tree Nursery. And we are coming to the end of summer. One of my favorite things to do is pick wild blackberries. For those of you who have worked with wild thorny blackberries or thorny marionberries, you know what an adventure that can be. After 50 plus years of harvesting these lovely fruits, I've developed some strategies and I want to share those with you today. So when we're working with blackberries, it's important to know a little bit about how they grow, which helps you understand how to harvest them more effectively. The first thing to know is there are two types of branches on a blackberry. Right over here, we have the first year branch, the primocane. It's very long, there's no berries on it at all. The second year, there will be branches, side branches, from this portion of the cane, and those will have the berry clusters on the bottom of them. And after many years of harvesting, I've finally gotten smart and remembered to bring my clippers when I go out to harvest. I also like to have a bucket that I keep around my neck so that both hands are free to work with the plants at the same time. What I have found to be really useful is I take my clipper and I go ahead and I tip off the first year cane and I just let that drop to the ground, which then uncovers all the fabulous berries. And I don't have to dig around in there and run the risk of hurting myself on those thorns. And now we can see right here all the different stages of ripeness that you'll find on any one cluster of fruit. This is a perfectly ripe berry. See how fat those droplets are, these individual fruits that are aggregated on this, what we call a berry. This is fat. It's a little, um, it's not quite as shiny as some of the others. When it starts to get just a little tiny bit dull, then you know the sugar is at its height. It comes right off. There's no mold, there's nothing else on there. That one goes in my bucket. And so I'm just gonna keep going back and forth, harvesting these lovely fat berries that aren't quite as shiny as some of the younger ones. And they're all gonna go in my bucket. And that's, that's how it goes. You just harvest the ones that are easy to reach when you can't see any more that are easy to reach, you can go ahead and cut off this group, let it drop, and get the ones behind. This strategy works well for any kind of berry that is on a long cane like this. If I was working with berries in my home garden, I wouldn't be cutting the prima canes like I did here because I wouldn't want to lose my harvest next year. When I'm working with a wild plant, and I'm also kind of pruning at the same time, keeping, keeping them from overcoming my grass, then I can prune away to my heart's content. One last thing I'll mention about these beauties is they are very full of liquid when they're perfectly ripe like this. Please make sure that you plan into your harvest schedule how you're gonna process them the day you pick them when they are at the height of their beauty. Make sure that you either have space in a freezer to put them in a freezer baggie and stick them in there or make juice out of them right away. Don't even let them last overnight in the fridge. When you come back in the morning, they will not be in as good a shape as they were when you picked them. And that's it. Thanks for joining us from Rain Tree Nursery. We will see you next time. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs>